as the leader of and the leader of Auckland Super Wow. Well, I'm just about so excited. So I'm going to do some greetings, first of all, and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my wonderful job being the leader of all of Auckland. And then I'm going to do a Waiata back to you. It's the new Auckland Waiata. And I'm going to sing it to you and then I'm going to make sure that your beautiful uh, school principal and deputy principal and all your staff have the words so that we can learn it together over the next year or two. I didn't bring the words today. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, in the iwi, in the mana, in the reo, in the hoa pa, uh, e karangatahi, uh, ro karangatahi ma. A Colin Brown, Takuing or Te Koromatua o Tamaki Makoto, no Ray Ratena Koto, a Taloka Lava, a Boka Dayatu, a Malula Lay, Kiorama, Nihao, Namaska, Namaste, Satri Kao, Salama Laka, half down, a Ongo Seal. So I've greeted you in some of the beautiful languages that you've talked to me uh, this morning and some that I have not because I'm still learning <coughs> because as the mayor for all of Auckland this is a very Auckland classroom because we have mums and dads coming from all around the world and one of the biggest jobs that I have been the mayor for all of Auckland is helping the people 200 different ethnicities people from Singapore and from Malaysia and from America and Russia and Iran and um, out of Mongolia and China and from all around the world who come to settle in our city. And I love it. It's one of the most wonderful things about the mayor, being the mayor for all of Auckland is that people are from all around the world who are coming to shift into Auckland now. And I want to make sure that they are all welcomed here and particularly you young children, that you know and understand your mayor and your council and your people love you and want you to have great lives here. And that's the thing that I most want for you all, that you feel that you are valued and you can have wonderful lives and go to great parks and have great sports and sing a lot and dance a lot and celebrate who you are so that you all know and love your city and you can say, I'm an Auckland, I love that. Are you Aucklanders and you love Auckland? Yeah. Oh, that doesn't sound very enthusiastic. Yeah. yeah. Well, children, Aucklanders sometimes haven't been that passionate about their city in the past. So I want you to be a generation, the new generation of Aucklanders who say, I'm an Aucklander and I love this place. And you know, you're so lucky. Because look at this school. When I came to this school, I mean, it's beautiful. Greeted by beautiful staff and beautiful children. And you've got a great outlook here. Surrounded by lovely trees and Newmarket is a great old town. Isn't it? Yes. yes. Oh, yes. I need to enthuse you more because you're not quite enthusiastic as me. But that's all right. So, I got, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm married and my wife's name is Shirley Ann, but I call her Shan. Her mother doesn't like it, but that's all right. And uh, she is a lawyer and we have three children. Sorry boys, three girls. Excellent, the girls win in our family. I'm surrounded by women, lots of women in my house. Hang on, question's coming up soon. Uh, and so, um, the, the oldest one, her name is Samantha. The middle one, her name is Olivia. Now, she's 15. She thinks boys are great. I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, and, and then the youngest one, her name is Victoria. And so today, she said, Daddy, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to Newmarket Primary School. And she says, oh, Daddy, are you going to see a whole lot of children? I said, yes. She says, please don't dance in front of them, it's so nap. <laughs> so I promise children I won't dance. She says, darling, 
I'm going to sing to them. Oh, okay, Daddy, you sing along. So, my daughters, uh, they, um, I'm very lucky because I'm loved by the women in my life, and particularly my daughters. And so, they know how busy it is for me being the mayor because I'm all over the place speaking a lot to children. But the reason why I like going to schools, and I've been to schools all around Auckland, is I want you children to feel comfortable with me as the mayor of the city. So, if you see me walking up and down Newmarket, what do you do? Yes? Um, please, please, yeah. That's a good boy. If, if I'm walking around Newmarket or we go into the coffee shops because I happen to follow the woman of my life into a lot of shops and hang around a lot around shops and cafes and restaurants, then if you see me in Newmarket and you're with your mum and dad or your friends or your brothers and sisters, Please come up and say, hello, Mr. Mayor, and do this to me. Give me five. Like that. That's what we're doing, all right? So we're greeting the Mayor, and we're coming up. And so say hello to me, because I love it when the children of the city come up and say hello. And whether we're down watching rugby or netball or soccer or hockey or stuff, because I hang out on sports fields too, I love it when you come up and say hello to me and tell me about how things are going in your life. Because... I want you to know that what's happening in our city is a direct connect to you and I'm listening to you. Because I know we don't have enough playgrounds, so you can have a lot of fun. So we're working to make sure that your lives are fabulous lives. But the one thing I like doing the most when I'm with children is listening to your singing and your performing and singing back to you. Because I like music in our streets. I want our place to be joyous, to be happy, so that we're having great lives here. So, I'm going to uh, finish because there might be some questions. So, after I've had um, my way out, can we take questions? Is that okay? Yeah. Excellent. Because I bet some of you got prepared questions, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, this way is the way or the song for Auckland. It's called Kotamaki Mata. And it's a waiata that talks about the story of Auckland, of Tamaki Makaro, as Māori call it. And uh, it talks about the original birth of Auckland from seven, eight hundred years ago when Māori first arrived here, to our, all of our journeys. And your mums and dads come from all around the world. We all come from another place. To how we are now and what we think about our story now and how we want the future to be, our hopes and dreams. The dreams I have for you young children to have great lives and the fact that I want you to dream and feel no constraints that you can achieve your dreams in the city and not go away and stay here. I love that. So, ko tamaki mātou. Ko tamaki Ko tamaki Ko tamaki mahato, ka ora e. Do you like it so far? Yes. Ho mai toringa, ho mai toringa, ho mai toringa, ka ora e. How's the mayor doing? Are doing okay? Yes. Definitely good. Okay. One last bit. Me te aroha. I'm talking about my heart and my love. Me te aroha. Me te aroha. Ka ora e.
Now, I work right in the middle of town in a place called the Town Hall. And I have to, have you been to the Town Hall yet to do any singing or any stuff like that? Yes. Oh, well, yes, some have, some have not. Well, you'll all get to the, go to the Town Hall because it is right in the middle of Queen Street. You know where Queen Street is? Yes. Yes, it's the heart of the city. And there is a beautiful big place called the Town Hall. And it's got a big uh, meeting place in it called the Town Hall Town Hall. And it's got an organ. <laughs> it's got a massive organ that plays great music. And I like singing in there. So one day you can come and sing to me and, and have me sing back to you. And I sit in there, uh, mostly. But generally my job is a job that means I'm all around the city coming to visit kids at Newmarket Primary and going to see kids out in Huia and up in Oriwa and out in Takapuna and down in Pukekohe. It's fabulous. What a great job I've got. Okay? Generally, I have Sundays with the family, mostly. If my wife was sitting here, you'd say, yeah, right. Uh, but um, Sundays at church, uh, and then uh, we will have family time a little bit in the afternoon. Uh, and so I don't... I used to play sport a lot and do lots of gardening, but I don't earn that anymore either. No time. So uh, when I've got spare time, I'm with my wife and children. Mostly. Uh, and we just chill out. I follow them into cafes and restaurants and go shopping and go to pictures. Harry Potter is very popular. Uh, and so I do that. A uh, little bit of reading now and again. And learning new songs. Uh, so, yeah. Um, look, what I do do is I take the children to school. I've got three daughters and two are still at school. A place called Santa Maria College. And so I take the two younger ones to school just so we spend some time together. So I say to them, so girls, what are you doing at school today? Nothing. <laughs> oh, golly. You kids, when you grow up and get older, don't tell your mums and dads nothing. Say, oh, I'm going to do maths and science and I'm going to hear the mayor today and it's going to be so exciting, mum and dad. My daughters, nothing. Oh, come on, you're doing something. Nothing. <laughs> What do you think we're going to do there to do? Well, yesterday I went to the funeral of one of New Zealand's greatest ever leaders. Who was that? Did anyone? Yes, young boy. Sir Paul Reeves. He was the oh. man. I knew Sir Paul Reeves who was one of our governor generals and church leaders and a great, great New Zealander. I knew him very well. And one of the things, he only had one word on his family crest, and I love this. It was, listen. Leaders have to listen and hear the people that they are leading. And that's why I come here, so I can listen to you. Uh, and secondly, though, a leader needs to really know where they're going, understand what it is they're trying to achieve. So if you are the captain of your netball team, everyone around you is sort of thinking, so what's the plan, Sam? <laughs> and so, you know, you need to have an understanding of what it is you want to achieve and make sure you can convey that to people around you. So listen and have a plan. Something the leader needs to do. Good question. How hard it can be really challenging to be. Anyone can be a leader. We're all leaders. But to be a good leader, sometimes you need to make decisions that are unpopular. Because everyone else thinks, no, we've got to go this way. <laughs> but sometimes the leader says, no, this is the way to go. And uh, sometimes I've had to make decisions uh, 
uh, that made people a little angry, even though it was the right thing that I thought that I had to do. And so the real proof of a leader is whether you can stand out from the crowds and lead them in another direction and be seen to be doing it fairly and with justice. So there is a little place called St. Helias. And that's a lovely little town. And when I first became the leader for all of Auckland, I had to make a difficult decision there in terms of a couple of old houses there. And the local community said, don't knock those houses down, please. And I said, look, I've got to make a tough decision and let those houses be knocked down. And that was a very hard thing for me to do, and they were not happy with me in that community. But I still had to make the decision I thought was the right one. So when you grow up, as you grow up and become a leader, you have to be prepared to have the moral courage and strength to make a decision that might not be popular. Um, how did you become mayor and what was the first thing you did as well? It was so Um, really what I did was I loved my community. That's how I became the mayor. And my original community was a little place in the southern part of Auckland called Otara. And I was raised there as a young boy. And in that community, I, from a very early age, started to do work in the community. I always liked being involved in what was going on in the street or in the shopping centre or what was happening with the environment, you know, how our creeks were being looked after. I was always really active as a young kid, from your age on. And so I just loved what was happening with my people and in the community. And, and so people just keep giving me more responsibility because I like doing stuff and, and working on stuff. And uh, in the end, I sort of led the Otara flea market and started becoming chairman of school committees and all sorts of things from quite a young age. And it was just working in the community that led me in strong leadership that people said, well, we trust you to do the right stuff and so you become the mayor. How about that? And I guess that's really what it was. And the first thing that I did when I became the mayor, don't tell anyone. Okay, this is a secret in the market. And you tell people I got into the town hall and no one was in the town hall chamber. And I went, ma 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 and it reverberated. And I thought, this is a great place to sing. So I sang some songs in the town hall chamber when no one was there and it was fabulous. <laughs> tricky thing for the, the mayor to do. Do I travel around? The question is, do I travel around New Zealand in my job? And the answer is yes, a lot. Uh, because Auckland, Auckland is such a big part of New Zealand, the population of Auckland is a third of the whole of New Zealand's population. And we're growing fast. So it's about 1.4 million of us in a population of 4.2 million New Zealanders. So we're big. And so what happened when I became the mayor for all of Auckland is that I was on TV a lot. And so if I go to Invercargill or Dunedin or Christchurch or Wellington or Whangarei or anywhere around, they know me as much as your mums and dads do. It's unbelievable. I'm really embarrassed. So um, they like to talk to me about what's going on in Auckland because the, the whole of the nation is very interested about what happens here and about how you guys are going. So I can talk to them about Newmarket Primary and what the kids there think. Uh, and so uh, I, I have to go around the country a bit and meet up with leaders around the country. But mostly I go to Wellington, where the Prime Minister is. And I think the Prime Minister came to visit, didn't he? Yeah. He tells a funny story about that. Does he? <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, it was quite a funny one because uh, he went in one of the classrooms and they had done a project about the mayor and the prime minister and the comparison and so on one of the, the, the things they said uh, the, um, the what 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 do they like about the prime minister and the prime minister is very busy 
And, and the, the other one they said was, so what do you like about the mayor? And the, this one said, the mayor is a nice man. <laughs> and the Prime Minister said, oh, but aren't I a nice man too? <laughs> you like that joke? <laughs> Anyhow, so I, so I do go down and see the Prime Minister uh, in Wellington, although I see a lot of them. I saw them at a meeting last night and we open all sorts of stuff at the moment. So, so. so you saw a travel around the country? Look. How do I make decisions? Um, now, this is how we make decisions in Auckland. I'll give you an example. Hands up those who came to school in a car today. Excellent. Hands up those who came to school on the bus. Right. Hands up those who walked to school. Very good. Hands up those who came to school on a bike. One. So, now what are you all doing by, when you put your hands up, you are voting, aren't you? You know what that? That's called voting. So you're voting with your hands and you're showing that this is what you support. Well, that's how we make decisions in Auckland. We, uh, I, I have got 20 councillors, and so the councillor for this community here, I think it's Cameron, Cameron Brewers. Is this done? Right. Right, that's right. I'm trying to think. You make a part of food. Why is Matawa all dead? Could be Mike Lee? Anyhow, Mike Lee. So, every part of the city has got a council. And there's 20 councillors on the Auckland Council. And I'm the boss of the councillors. I'm the leader of the councils. And so, when we decide what we want to do for Auckland, whether it's get more buses or trains or build new sports fields, we all vote to decide whether we do that or not. Like, we put our hands up. And some say yes, and some say no. Fortunately, mostly they say yes. And so it's called democracy. We all vote for our future. Do you like that? Yes. yes. One of these days you're going to grow up and you're going to have a right to vote for who's the mayor and who's the councillors and who's the prime minister and all that. It's so exciting. I am. Yes. So many tough decisions. decisions so far. I'm struggling with that one, to tell you the truth, because they, I mean, uh, <laughs> do it there and I had to argue and argue and argue to get a better playground in Myers Park because it's such a little park but so many kids go to the city and they've got nowhere to pay. So that was such a tough decision because I'd say, no, nope, we're doing it. You like that? Even though it's going to be great fun. 
It is mostly about promoting our city and this country to the world as a great place to come to. We know more visitors, so you and all your mums and dads who come from different parts of the world get more and more of your family and friends and old workmates to come here and visit and spend a lot of money and have a great time. Is that good? Yeah. So that's why I'm so excited about the Rugby World Cup. And I oh, know it's not a hard job for me. I've got the greatest job because I'm the one doing all the hosting. Man, so I'm going to lots of rugby games, just as well I like rugby, otherwise it would be a real problem. Uh, but it is going to be a great Rugby World Cup. And boy, we are going to do a great job of it, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, that's not enthusiastic enough. We're going to do a great job of the Rugby World Cup. Yeah. Yeah. 